Hi everyone, Grant K here from the Smoke Learning Channel. In today's modern post-production pipeline, we are always edging towards a tapeless environment. Now I know that most of you have already taken that step towards a tapeless-based workflow, but there's still a fair few of you who still use HD and SD VTRs. So we're going to do something a little old school, capturing from tape. Autodesk Smoke has the ability to capture SD or HD through an SDI connection. This means that the software can capture uncompressed 444 directly from tape. Now for all you guys who do this, don't forget about the sync generator to lock the VTR to Smoke, as well as your RS-422 controller cable. Now since there are so many configurations of VTRs, We'll start off on the Mac desktop where you can configure which VTR you would like Smoke to use. Go to the dock and open the Applications folder. Select the Autodesk folder, the Smoke folder, and finally the Utilities folder where you will find the Smoke Setup application. The Setup window allows to tweak various aspects of Smoke and in this case you can choose VTR. You have a whole range of VTRs to choose from by scrolling down through the list and you can enable multiple options if you like. I'll choose a PAL VTR for this example. You'll have to trust me that it works the same for HD VTRs, but I don't have one. Once you have changed the setting, press Apply and Reload to ensure that the settings stick. Now you can close the setup window and start booting into Smoke. A point to make is that the resolution of the current Smoke project matches the resolution of the VTR. In this case, I'm using a PAL SD widescreen project. Let's start off by going into the clip library that is the equivalent of a media bin in other apps. Now you can organize your media before or after capturing, but I like putting media into a reel, which is the equivalent of a folder for media so that I definitely know where to find the footage. To the left of the interface, I'll click the New Reel button and type a name in for the reel. I'll call it VTR Captures. With the reel selected, you can go to the Video I.O. menu at the bottom of the interface. Here we have Input Clip, which is used to capture from tape. Once you click this button, the VTR initializes and you are launched into the Capture menu. The first thing to ensure is that you have the correct VTR selected from the list if you had enabled multiple VTRs through the Setup application. There are also options for bit depths and scan modes. On the far right is the indications panel for the VTR. This will tell you if you're receiving a signal, if you're in remote or local control for the deck, as well as the current state of the VTR, which is currently paused. Next to the indications are the track selection buttons for video and multiple audio tracks. Controlling the VTR is really simple. You have play controls which drive the VTR, but you could also scrub the bottom edge of the picture which allows you to either jog or shuttle the deck. Now just before you capture, you can assign the tape names and clip descriptions under the player controls so you can have multiple captures from different tapes. Now you can capture on the fly, capture after creating a log list, or capture using an EDL to assemble your program. We'll be looking at the first two methods. Capturing on the fly can be done in two ways. The fastest way is to use your cursor and capture as the VTR plays. To set this up, you would set the capture mode to start and stop on the pen, or in this case, the click of the cursor. To start the VTR rolling, as well as enable the capture, I'll press the Process button. The VTR starts rolling, 
but capturing only starts when I click on the image. The timecode counter goes green, indicating the capture. The second click on the image stops the capture. The second capture on the fly method is more accurate. Using the start and stop on timecode options, you could manually enter in the timecodes, or you could play the VTR and press the in and out buttons to mark a section for capture. If I press the process again, the VTR will queue to the timecodes. The deck will then begin the pre-roll, followed by capturing the section we marked up. All of the clips that we've captured so far have been deposited into the media reel folder that we selected in the clip library. The second method of capturing we're going to look at is the log and capture method. This method works pretty much the same as you would expect in other applications. For example, we will change the tape name just to highlight the difference. In the capture module, we have already used timecode markers to accurately choose the segment and capture it. However, if you wanted to capture multiple shots in one session, you can go through the tapes and log the timecodes before proceeding with the capture. To log the shots, we simply press play, followed by mark in, mark out, and EDL log. We'll do this one more time. Mark in, mark out, and EDL log. After you have logged the various shots on tape, you can click the EDL button. This launches us into the EDL manager that also doubles up as a log list manager. Here you can see the entries in the list and you can also click on the various aspects and edit them if necessary. We also need to define the destination for the logged media. We will use the same reel we created in the beginning of this video. To capture the shots we've logged, you would press select all and at the bottom of the interface, you will see a blue button labeled Capture. Clicking on this button takes us into Auto Capture, where the log list, or EDL for that matter, can be captured. Just for your reference, you can also set the frame handles before doing the capture. Pressing the Auto Capture sets the process off, and Smoke will ask you to insert the first tape, and you can begin your capture. We'll speed forward in time just to see what happens once the capture is completed. The capture is complete. You have to exit Auto Capture to return back to the EDL module. You can see that each entry has a small X indication that tells you which clips have been captured and they're ready to use. Let's exit the EDL module back to Capture from Tape. And finally, we exit the Capture menu back to the Clip Library. If we expand the reel, you will now see the clips we captured on the fly, as well as the clips captured with the log list. If you'd like to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke, or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy, just go to autodesk.com forward slash Smoke for Mac. This is Grant K signing off for the Smoke Learning Channel. Thank you.